Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Hi all, I am Gauri Manohri, Assistant Professor from Department of Computer Science Engineering in Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Today the session is about linear models. So linear models are an important topic in machine learning concepts and deep learning concepts. So what is meant by linear model? Linear model generates a formula to create a best fit line to predict unknown values. So here we can see the data points which are in blue color and the, the red line represents the model, the best fit line to classify the data. Okay, this model captures the, uh, the data points in a particular direction. So this cannot be predicted but we can train the model, we can train the data uh, to uh, classified into a best fit line. So in this linear model, uh, we are going to see some important linear models that is SPM, perceptron and logistic regression. The first one we are going to see about SPM. What is meant by SPM? It is support vector machine. Support vector machine is a, a supervised learning algorithm and it is used for classification and regression problems. Uh, so what is meant by supervised? Supervised means it has a labeled data. All, always we will be labeling the data uh, and it is called as supervised and it is used in classification algorithms. So in this support vector machine, uh, we will be creating a, a best fit line that is it's called a hyperplane to create a n dimensional space. The best line or decision boundary that creates n dimensional space uh, that distinctly classifies the data point. That particular decision, the best decision boundary is called as hyperplane. So the SPM chooses the extreme points vectors uh, which helps in creating the hyperplane. So what is hyperplane? It will be created with the maximum margins which means the maximum distance between the particular margin and the data points. So the data points along with that hyperplane that is along with the margin is called support vectors. We will be seeing in this uh, particular diagram which represents the SPM. You can see here this is the hyperplane which classifies this. This is a cl class A and this is the class B2 data uh, which has been classified by the hyperplane. So this is the maximum margin so this this side is called as negative and this will be a positive hyperplane this is the negative hyperplane and this will be a positive hyperplane so here i be using an expression called x into w plus b equal to 0 what is x x is nothing but the inputs given to the model uh, into weights uh, w represents the weights and b is nothing but the bias that will be 0 so here if i am taking in the negative hyperplane I can take as x into x dot w plus bias equal to minus 1. In positive side, I can take it as x dot w plus b equal to plus 1. So that is a positive and this is the negative. And along with the uh, margin, this is called support vectors. Always the support vectors either in the positive side or negative side, it will be along with the margin. Here, this will be the maximum margin hyperplane. So, this, this is the best decision mount boundary which classifies the data. This is called hyperplane. So, working of SPM. What is working of SPM? So, here I am taking a, a supervised learning algorithm. What is supervised learning algorithm? Uh, we know that it is a labeled data. So, here I am taking an example, I am classifying the features of an animal, that is this is a dog, this is the cat, how I will be classifying it? So, the features of the dog will be like this, the features of the cat will be like this, I will be training the model with the, uh, how the dog eyes will be, how the cat eyes will be, I am training the model. So, here we can see that the lots of images of cats and dogs has been, the features has been uh, tested and it mean implemented into the model. So here a support vector creates a decision between, between the two data points that is between the dog and the cat. So in this extreme cases we can see, so suppose it is used for classification and regression problems, primarily used for classification problems, we used it for classifying the problems and uh, the goal of the SVM algorithm to find out the best decision boundary to classify the data points. 
So, where it will be used? The applications is face detection, image classification and text categorization. So, here uh, in these kind of things we will be using this uh, SPM. And there are two types of SPM. One is linear SPM and another one is non-linear SPM. So, what is linear SPM? The data which can be separate easily that is a linearly separable data. The, the data, the two classes which can be easily separated by a best fit line is called linear. The data which is cannot be separated that is non-separable data is called non-linear SPM. So, in this example we can see this is the linear uh, SPM. Uh, you can see here two uh, data that is class A and class B which can be separated uh, by using a, a best fit line. So, in non-linear you cannot draw with the best fit line. You can see here the single straight line for non-linear data cannot be drawn because the data points class A, class B is classified like this. So, I am using some expression to solve this problem. So, first I have to change the non-linear data into a data uh, linear data and I have to uh, divide the data by using a best fit line. So, how I had been uh, um, done into a linear model is I am adding a one uh, expression called z equal to x square plus y square. Okay, for this, uh, then I'm then after doing this, the con after this conversion, it has been the data has been separated into two classes. That is, this is being a class A, and this will be a class B. Though, so, there's a green uh, dots will be representing class A, and the blue uh, triangles will be representing the class B. Now, this has been done into a, a linear uh, data. Now, after divided this into two classes, it can be easily separated. You can see this is a class A, class B. So, here if I am drawing a straight line, a best fit line, so the two data can be divided easily. So, here, here this is the best hyperplane where the two data are being separated into uh, different forms that is class A and class B. So, now I am converting into two dimensional one. So, after this I am converting into two dimensional one you can see here and this data is the particular middle data will be the uh, after uh, segregating the middle data and the outer one that is the class A and class B uh, separating line will be the best hyperplane. So, with this uh, SPM that is one of the linear model we saw the second one the most important thing is perceptron. What is meant by perceptron? It is a most important uh, co concept in deep learning or machine learning models. So, here we are going to train the model with, we will be sending with some inputs and we will be sending with weights, always the input will be sent along with the weights to the, uh, this is called as summer adder and after this we will be multiplying this inputs and weights and we will be giving it to the adder that is some after this we will be giving to the activation function. So, this is called activation function. There are many types of activation function. Uh, one is a step function, one is sine function and sigmoid. Here in perceptron we will be using sigmoid activation function. After this you will be getting the output. The output will be either 0 or 1. Here perceptron is a binary classifier and this sigmoid function also it gives the values like 0 to 1. So, the value will be either 0 or 1. So, here uh, if it is a positive output or negative output also, here the actual output is not uh, achieved to the target output, you will be uh, getting as an error and you have to back propagate. Okay, this process is called also called as back propagation. You have to back propagate and again you have to change the weights. In perceptron, the most important thing is always you have to change only the weights, not the inputs. The inputs always should be constant, only the weights can be changed if there is an error. After changing the weights, again you have to multiply the input and weights and given to the adder, then it will be given to the activation function. This process will be uh, repeated until it gets the uh, predicted value. Here it is uh, comes under the artificial neural network that is perceptron. Uh, it is a supervised learning algorithm and binary classifiers and all, already we had seen the most important parameters here is inputs, weights, uh, summer that is weight sum, then activation function, then outputs. Here this is the step function, this is the sine function and this is the sigmoid function. Here you can see a step function which comes under the positive uh, uh, side and here in sine function it varies from minus 1 to plus 1 and in sigmoid the value will be like 0 to 1. 
here the characteristics of perceptron as we saw how the inputs and weights has been multiplied and given to the adder and it is given to the activation function and the uh, and it will be given the output. So, these are the steps and uh, some mathematical calculation involved in this perceptron is in the first steps we will be multiplying the inputs and weights. Uh, how you will be calculating? This is the sum that is wi is nothing but the weights and xi is nothing but the input that will be given as x1 into w1 plus x2 into w2. So, we will giving more number of inputs and weights. Okay. So, perceptron is a neural network model. What is a uh, neural network model? It will be having an input layer, hidden layers. Hidden layer can be more number of hidden layers and one output layer. So, it comes under x1 into w1 that is uh, one layer then x2 w2 another layer till uh, xn wn. Then the special uh, term that is bias that is the weight sum to improve the method performance that is you are adding this that is sum of wi into xi weight into inputs or input into weights plus b b is nothing but bias that okay then step 2 step 2 after giving to the bias that is the sum you will be giving to the activation function so the mathematical representation will be like you are giving expression y equal to f f represents the activation function and uh, into sum of wi into xi plus b so, this is the limitation of perceptron. What are the limitations? The output of the perceptron can be either a binary number that is 0 or 1. So, perceptron can be only used to classify the linearly separable data. It cannot be used in non-linear separable data. So, the third one. Third one we are going to see is logistic regression. So, what is the logistic regression is nothing but you are going to predict the categorical dependent variable uh, using a given set of independent variable. So, what is the dependent variable and what is the independent variable? You are going to, uh, for example, I am telling one uh, real time one example is like based on the uh, employee performance, experience and performance, the salary will be increased. So, the performance will be the independent variable and the salary will be increased will be dependent variable. Based on this performance and based on this experience, the salary will be changing. Or you can take it as a, the date of birth cannot be changed, right? So, the date of birth. But the years passes depends upon the date of birth, the age will be increasing. So, you can, the relationship between the uh, both, that is the dependent and independent variable is called as logistic regression. So, here, how the output will be? It will be either 0 or 1. Either it can be true or false. Either it comes under one category, either male or female. So, now uh, this, uh, this is the one of the example, it will be a probabilistic value in between 0 or 1. So, here linear regression used for solving regression problems, where logistic regression is used for solving the classification problems. It is mainly used in classification problems. So, how it will be represented? It will be represented as a S-shaped curve. You can see it here. Okay, before that we will be seeing it is a mathematical function, it predicts the value, it will be ranges from 0 to 1 and it will be a S-shaped curve, see it is a S-shaped curve, okay, this uh, this will be uh, representing the sigmoid curve, it is also called a sigmoid uh, activation function which represents, uh, it uses a sigmoid activation functions, this S-curved is called a sigmoid curve, okay, uh, so you are taking a threshold value, in between value. Okay, depends, it will, it will fix a in between value. What are the steps in uh, logistic regression? First, we will be collecting the data that is called data pre-processing. After collecting the data, we will be fitting a logistic regression to train the data set. Then predicting the test result. You will be predicting the test result. For example, I am uh, taking, a, I am uh, predicting some disease, if it is a cancer or not, uh, if it is a COVID or not, if uh, what are the common symptoms, the prediction involved uh, regarding the data, I am analyzing, I am predicting some particular disease or not. Then uh, test accuracy of the result, what is the accuracy you achieved in that particular uh, trained model, what is the accuracy level and the finally we will be visualizing the test result. And the types in logistic regression is one is binomial and multinomial and third one is ordinal. What is binomial? Only a possible outputs either it is a 0 or 1 either it pass or fail. If you are writing an exam either you will pass or fail. So, the probability either 0 or 1 it is true or false. 
Next, multinomial. Multinomial is is the unordered types of the dependent variable, such as the features. You are taking example of any animals. It might be a cat, dog, or sheep, or fox, whatever it is. Then it's ordinal. It's a possible ordered types of some dependent variables. What is dependent variable? I'm taking a a fan, the speed of the fan. So so a particular object. So it has a three uh, variant of speed. So you can make it as a low, medium, or I. So this comes under the ordinal. So these are the uh, types of logistic regression. So uh, here we saw what is linear model and what are the uh, types. What we saw in linear models that is SPM, perceptron, and logistic regression. Here I will end this session. Thank you all.